Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have a special announcement today and I have to do this in front of this video because it is a very important announcement for me and maybe some of you guys can benefit from that too. Most of you guys know me already and you know that I'm a violin teacher and a violinist and I'm really passionate about teaching the violin and I'm also really passionate about teaching the violin online. So in the year 2020 I released my first online course. It's called the Intonation Guide for Violinists. You can still buy this course. It's a bargain really. I collected there my best exercises to improve your intonation and best practices to improve your intonation, whatever you play. In 2021, I already started developing a new course and the main line of the course is to improve your sound on the violin. And that is also why the course is called Sound of the Violin. But now some important details. From today on, I will start pre-selling my course Sound of the Violin. And let me now tell you what you will get and what advantages you will have if you join in the pre-sale period, which started right now. You can find the core curriculum on the page that I will link under this video. But now we come to the first advantage. During the pre-sale period, you can indicate the direction the course will go with making topic suggestions. So if you have a specific question or a specific topic you want me to elaborate on, you can suggest that topic and I will make a video for that if it fits the topic of Sound of the Violin. Those videos will be added to the curriculum as well. So what we basically do, we can refine the course together. That's one reason I'm very thankful for everyone who will join the pre-sale period. Because I need your guys' feedback to make this course really an exceptional experience for everyone. The second advantage is, if you join during the pre-sale period, that I will give you a huge discount on the final price of the product. So you can now jump on the course for 30% off the original price with the code PRESALE30. If you click the link in the description under the video, the discount is already applied and you can just go to the checkout page and get the course for 30% off. The finished curriculum will include over 25 video lessons. Every lesson includes PDFs, sheet music, printable and downloadable. And also I will make for every exercise I give you a play along video. The course will be structured in two parts. The first part will be exercises and concepts for the bow arm so that you can improve your sound and make a sweeter, more connected and singing sound. Also, we will talk about techniques like retakes, bow speed, contact point. A good bow control is very important to develop a singing sound on the violin. The second part of the course will be about vibrato. I will give you my best exercises and practice them with you. In my opinion, teaching vibrato is a very individual matter. Improving your vibrato is not magic. It is actual good practice and hard work. And with regular exercise, make guaranteed progress. I will this time offer also a premium package, which will include a 45 lesson with me one-on-one, -on -one, where I can try to help you individually and we can elaborate together a good plan for you to improve your sound on the violin. The places on the premium package, which will include the 45 minute lesson, will be limited. So if you think this is for you and you want a more individual approach, you should jump on it as long as it is available. Thank you all for your attention. The link to my new online course the Sound of the Violin is in the description under this video. I hope to see you as my student in The Sound of the Violin. Have fun with the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to talk about the two-set violin performance of the D minor violin concerto by Johann Sebastian Bach. This work by Johann Sebastian Bach is very close to my heart. I played it a lot in the past and I'm very curious to find out how Brett and Eddie played this piece because there are some things like historical informed interpretation and also maybe Baroque instruments or gut strings. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to spoil anything. You guys know more than myself, but I will keep an eye on that as well. Also on the interpretation, technically playing style wise, but I'm very sure they will harmonize well together. They are such a great team and I think that will express itself also musically. That being said, there's something new here and this is this guy right here. This is a microphone from the company Schöps and this is a sponsored product which I received for now for free and this is not just any microphone. This is a top class microphone. I would even say Schöps is the number one manufacturer for small condenser microphones and that's not just my opinion. I talk to studio owners, audio engineers and they always recommended to me this company for a small condenser Denser microphone, but especially for recording instruments and the violin, which is not an easy instrument to record. So I'm very curious what you say about the sound quality of my videos from now on. This is the new microphone. Check out Schöps 
the company who built this amazing microphone. I'm very, very much looking forward to record with this microphone in my summer holidays. I already have plans for that. I practice some guitar parts. I have a cover in the making, maybe not just one. I will have to see how many I can manage to record in the holidays. But the first test with this microphone are just amazing. You can check out the specs on their homepage in the description under this video. Sherps also has a very entertaining and interesting YouTube channel. Go there and subscribe to them if you are interested in recording the violin with one of the best microphones for that purpose. So let's dive into the video. So the Bach D minor concerto took place after the Mendelssohn violin concerto played by Brett Young and before the Paganini violin concerto played by Eddie Chen. I'm very curious to find out about this performance. Let's dive into it. Okay, let me stop right here. There's already some things interesting to find out. So the Bach double concerto in D minor was uh, written for a string orchestra, so chamber orchestra with basso continuo, uh, which basically means um, there's a cembalo in uh, this orchestra and of course a double bass uh, group, but uh, basso continuo uh, can also be cello plus cembalo, for example. They are going with the traditional setup and also have this old instrument the cembalo right here in the middle you can see that here the wood stand really amazing instrument and surprisingly loud <laughs> One thing I have to say at this, this point, because we are here on an educational channel, um, in the Bach double concerto, it is the second violin which starts. I think all the movements. For the first movement, the second violin starts and the first violin enters later. That might let you think the second violin is the first violin, because normally the first violin starts, right? Not in this case. The second violin starts from the D string and the first violin starts from the A string later. And also what is interesting in this concerto and also other baroque violin concertos is that the violins play in the tutti in the beginning so they play together with the first violin together with the second violin there's literally no difference to the solo violin part and the tutti part in the beginning until the real solo part starts which then differs to the instrument groups <laughs> I think I saw some something funny. I just told you that the second violins play together with Eddie right here. Look at their bows. Uh, just in the end, I think they have different bowings. Now it's up bow and then I think they change. Down, up, Eddie plays. Yeah, and the second violin group plays up, down in the end. Yum, bum, bum, bum. And Eddie plays yum, bum, bum, bum. It can be intentional, but uh, usually, of course, what you want to do either as the soloist or as the violin section, you want to play the same bowings because it's really, it's exactly the same. It's just a minor detail, really ma minor detail. I don't know why I see those th things, but it is really a different bowing at that place. It's really, really not a problem, but just to my perfectionist eyes, I would change that. I would go with same bowing. If you play together with a section, try to go with the same bowing. Yeah, and that was the cembalo, as I mentioned before. I'm always amazed how powerful this instrument is. The cembalo is a plucking instrument, so the strings are plucked. But it's not like a piano where the hammer is hitting the string. It's really a plucking instrument. That's also why the sound is so different. It's so sizzling. It carries so much against a whole string orchestra. It's an amazing instrument and I'm somehow sad that it's mostly only used in old music. To me, it should be used much more often. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I'm sorry uh, to stop. I'm here to comment on, on the video, of course. When I would listen to it, I, I would, of course, not stop at any time. It's uh, such great music, you should listen to it as a whole. I just wanted to point out some things. First of all, they have a different sound, especially Brett has a different sound now. I, I hate to say this because it's so such a stereotype. He has a lighter sound for the Baroque music. Lighter in terms of the phrasing is different. Uh, so the, the notes don't have so much sustain. Every note has a small belly. Also the vibrato is much less than when he played, for example, the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, which is also something you usually do when you play Baroque music. Historically, it is proven that at that time the vibrato was more likely used for emphasizing some moments. It's, it's an expression tool which you don't use all the time. I can see he still uses vibrato right here on nearly every note. You can see he uses a small vibrato on every note to warm up the sound. And that is a thing you should also usually do when you play a modern instrument and perform baroque music. Because if you play completely without vibrato, especially the E string sounds very pale and very thin. And that's not what it sounded back then. The instruments were different and especially the strings were different. They played wound gut strings in the time of Johann Sebastian Bach. So if you want to go close to the style of that time with modern instruments you have to a little bit warm up the sound with a vibrato and regarding the use of the bow the the length of the notes the first recording i heard from this concerto was a recording from yehudi menuhin and george inescu his teacher and colleague playing this wonderful concerto together it's an amazing recording but it is far from being historically informed in the modern sense. It's played with a lot of vibrato and also in a very romantic way, but it's an amazing, an amazing recording. For example, the solo. What Eddie does here, he plays the notes a little bit. So there's a lot of air between the notes and the romantic way isn't to play that. So Menuhin and uh, George Enescu played it much more like uh, In the romantic way of playing, every note is longer and more sustained and also has, of course, more vibrato. To me personally, I like that style. Maybe it's because it was the first recording I listened to of this concerto and always the first recording what you will listen to from any repertoire will somehow influence you in the way you like this concerto. But going back to listening to that recording, I still like that style. And when I play this concerto, I was taught in school, in, in university, to play those notes short. And even the upper note shorter than the bottom note. Not so extreme maybe, but in this direction. The bottom note is the bass note. And why should we play the upper note louder? or in the same dynamic. That's an argument you can make. It makes sense rationally. But to me, for my feeling, this interval. It's really intense interval and I like to, to really, the upper note is not unimportant and you are the soloist playing it like, uh, I'm accelerating. It's not so much my taste. Brett plays, plays it I think in a very good manner, in a very balanced way. It's not too loud, it's not too uh, too different in dynamic, it's not over exaggerated that he tries to play lightly or something. And he also adds a little bit of vibrato to compensate for the fact that we don't play on gut strings right here. In the, the musical decision part, I'm very much on his side or their side. I think they talked about that also before that concerto, how you want to play it. More vibrato, less vibrato, shorter notes, longer notes. I think it's a well balanced approach, interpretation, which you cannot go wrong with because you are not going extremely on the Baroque side, trying to be the historical informed performer. And also you are not over romanticizing this music, which is also something you should nowadays <laughs> be careful with. But as I said before, the recording of Yehudi Menuhin and George Inescu is very romantic and I like it. Let me show you just uh, the beginning of the solo. So here we go. Here is the beginning of the solo played by the great, great, great violinist Yehudi Menuhin and the equally great violinist and composer George Inescu. <laughs> So 
So as you heard, both notes are really emphasized, have vibrato, hearable vibrato, and uh, are not shortened at all. And I like it, I like it. Of course, they played on gut strings at that time when the recording was made, but this is not historically informed gut string style. That is the romantic gut string sound, which uh, Menuhin was one of the greatest when it comes to that kind of sound. But let's go back to Eddie and Brett and see how it all develops. <laughs> They harmonize so well together. It's uh, such a bromance. <laughs> it's uh, just amazing because you can hear they agree on how to play this concerto. Even though, of course, you always have to find some compromises between two people and uh, the opinions, they really accepted to play it the same way and they meld together so well. They are very individual players technically and I think also maybe musically, but they both are so broad in the, their mind uh, that they find the way to work together this interpretation. I think it's great to hear such things because oftentimes you hear this concerto performed by world-class violinists who are also at the same time very strong individualists and they play and bring their individual taste and play style into those pieces which is also great it's nice to hear for example in the recording of Manu and Enescu you can hear two very different styles and very personal styles of playing the violin it's also good to have a common ground of interpretation which Eddie and Brett do my ears have you can hear that because the phrasing and the articulation of the notes is very similar. And the orchestra is playing very short notes as well, but that's also important just to let the violins through because they are playing in the same register. It's the counterpoint of Bach's music. All voices are moving. There's so much going on. If you are in the string section, you have to play with really just a little bit of bow to let the soloist through. Okay, I heard there a little bit of a thing I always try to teach my students when I teach this concerto not to do. There's the section where you give the second violin the second solo entry. This, uh and before that, I think it's very important not to slow down. And I think I heard Brett a little bit slowing down before giving this melody over to Eddie. So let me just show you this place. So you would like to play in the end a little bit slower uh, this but it's not the end of the phrase the second violin continues on the next 16th note so i think it's very important in the last bar not to slow down if he did that he did it very little but to me it sounds a little bit like eddie has to start again there and that should not be the feeling it should be and that continuing with the solo of course by the way i'm playing the new dynamo strings which i just put on in a live stream some hours ago they sound amazing to me and if you want to check out a very good string shop in europe it's polycord.com it's a great shop in europe with great prices link in the description if you want to shop violin strings or other strings like bass strings viola strings they are really a great shop in europe with competitive prices as well using the link under this video you can also support this channel because i get a little bit of a affiliate income from that i'm very excited to test those strings and to make a review for that later on this channel. Check out polycord.com, link in the description. It's just a little bit. The second last note, a little bit, is, is, is maybe a little bit longer. Thank you. 
I have to say the tempo is not very high. It could be a little bit faster. I have heard this movement played so fast. I'm not a fan of a very fast tempo, but I think this is also a little on the slower end, but it always has to make sense musically. If you play slower, you have to make more out of it. So you have to make great phrasings and so on. If you play fast, some things vanish somehow, and it's not so easy to play great phrasings and some also don't translate very much in the fast tempo. That's why I'm not a big fan of a too fast tempo, but I think it's really on the comfortable side here. They slow down a little bit in the solo sections, so it's now a little bit faster again. It's interesting to see both of them play on the Stradivari instruments, which they don't own, of course. They are lent instruments by Tarisio for that concerto. My opinion was the instrument which Brett plays right here is the instrument of those both which made the impression to me when they tested those instruments that it is easier to play somehow. It's also a little bit, it's, it looks a little bit smaller and it doesn't have too much character, so to say, but it's also much director in response. And I don't agree too much in the choice of instrument they made. I think they could have switched the violence because no offense to Eddie, but I think Brett is a more accomplished violinist or maybe he practiced more. I don't know, but he felt very comfortable on both instruments. And I think that Eddie, when he tested both Stradivarius, he of course can make more more also with the more characterful instrument which he ended up playing but also I think that Brett could have an easier time on that instrument because it seems that the instrument which Eddie ended up playing is harder to play and to me I think that Brett would have coped with that very well. He also played the instrument which he ended up playing very well which is still e an easier to play instrument. Of course he's smaller in height and maybe that makes sense also that he wanted to play the smaller or easier to play instrument. But I would be so curious to hear the same concerto again with switched up violence. Very nice, the swelling of the sound, very, very baroque style. It's uh, great. This swelling of the note is oftentimes used in historical informed performances because there is a technique which is called Messa di Voce, which is an old technique used at that time, especially by singers and especially by castrati, which are those guys which get removed their balls and then they can sing with the power of a man, but with a very high register, really high notes with a lot of power. And they used this Messa di Voce, which basically means prepare your voice for the crescendo, the big crescendo, and then they can show how big of a sound they have. And we can do that on the violin too. When we start a long note, we start the note rather controlled, so messa di voce. And then we develop the sound during the note, going to a good forte sound. And if we are talking about a combination of old historical informed performances and new techniques, you can also add a little bit of vibrato at the peak of the note. But the original Messa di Voce was without vibrato. So the actual hard part in this is not the swelling to the crescendo, but uh, the good pianissimo sound in the beginning and the end of the note. But let's continue with the video. <laughs> I 
I'm hearing they can play the concerto, of course. It's not a hard concerto to play. You can play that when you are an average student uh, still in your high school years. You will play this concerto and you will enjoy playing this concerto. But there are some places where you have to go to second position and back again, which are a little bit hard to make sound easy because we as violinists, we don't like to play in the second position. So in this place, second position and back to third. There is basically no other way around that. You cannot play this place without the second position. In tempo, it doesn't make sense. So I know there is a difficult place there or a place where you have to go with the uncomfortable fingering, but I think it could sound a little bit more on the really well-prepared student side. They are very concentrated to, to not screw up these places because they are not easy. I mean, they played a lot of repertoire for them at that day. Brett played the whole Mendelssohn and I'm assuming that they didn't practice the Bach Dobe concerto that much and they also choose this concerto to play together because it's not so much work to put together. But um, yeah, in my opinion, those places could sound a little bit more effortlessly and also a little bit more expressive. You can see with Brett that he plays this place somehow of timid. So this place, I mean, it's a ya da di da di da 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 di da 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 di da da da. It's a little bit on the not really flowing side, and I would think if they play just this concerto and practice those places more and more and more, like they practice the Mendelssohn and maybe the Paganini concerto, which we we'll come to later, I think it would be even greater. I have to say, though, I'm critiquing on a really high level because I watched the Mendelssohn concerto played by Brett and he plays on a high level. He's a professional violinist, so, so to say. I'm judging this performance now on that level. And I think there's some studentness which I hear in that places. <laughs> I don't want to go into every small detail of here he slips a little bit or here is some bow noise, but there was a bow noise there uh, when Brett played that part. That occurs oftentimes if you are not really comfortable with your fingering and with the place in general, of course. But he also seems to have a little bit of problem with the E string of the violin. It was not the first time I heard that uh, or a similar noise uh, from him in this concerto right now. And here comes the quality which I love both guys for. And in this case, it was Eddie playing this phrasing so great and uh, his melody, his counterpoint to the first violin. It's, it's just amazing and so musical. Let me rewind and listen to it. It's, it's just great. It's uh, something you, you don't hear so often in that place. He really enjoys his voice. He listens to the first voice. He looks at him. He really enjoys the moment, I, I think. And the music, the great, great music. And it's really important for music like this, where you have a counterpoint style of composing, that every voice it's really important, especially the second violin or the viola, the, the middle voices or the, the deep voice, of course, and the high voice, they are always present. But those middle voices, they make the, the spice in the music and he is really spicy right here. <laughs> so nicely phrased from, from Eddie, really, really great. This transition to me was better. It was more leading into the solo of this time, Brett. <laughs> Ya da 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 di ba 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 bum bum. It's a good connection there. 
by the way, I, I wanted to say before the Stubble Concerto, Eddie was not on this stage before, so he's playing cold right now. And Brett has already played his Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, so he is we very well played in, to say um, it positively, maybe um, also a little bit exhausted at that point. But to have some squeaks or some uncomfortable places if you are not played in is very usual. I'm seeing now that Eddie warms up here and plays out his qualities, which is his communication skills, which also translates very well in their two-set violin content. He's really the open guy. Of course, uh, Brett is also really a funny guy, but it's, it's more like inside going motion. Eddie is like uh, outside and you need some partners in, in music like that who are very open and always looking at you when you look at them. It's just great to play with uh, such characters, uh, musicians. <laughs> And for that place, I even prefer the um, phrasing of Eddie, I must say. Um, Brett was very short with his notes in this entry of the solo. And uh, Eddie has a little, bit, a little bit more of a smoother entry right here. And the high notes and the lower notes are better connected. Just my taste. <laughs> Wow, that was a long break before the last load. Bom, bom, bom. You can do that, but... <laughs> yeah, beautiful, beautiful, just beautiful. So in the next video, I'm going to go over the second movement of Two Set Violin playing this Bach Double Concerto. I need to concentrate on the different movements because they have such a different character. Now, as usual, I talked so much already about performance, practice, musicality and interpretation choices that we see each other in the next video where I will go over the second movement of the Bach Double Concerto and I can't wait to record that for you guys. Check out my sponsors. Links are in the description. Ships microphones, big things go out to them. Polycode.com, big things go out to them. Big things go out to you guys. Leave a comment for the algorithm on YouTube. Also, you can activate the bell to get a notification when I upload something or when I go live, which is sometimes very spontaneous and you won't miss a video or live from me. Take care guys, have fun practicing and see you in the next one. Bye bye.